Greetings fellow the Growers and I'm here with another Mafia 3 news update and this comes from a interview with I believe it is Game Reactor yeah it is Game Reactor early this morning with creative director Hayden Blackman at Mafia 3 and it was about a 15 minute interview, it was a really good interview to be honest on the website and it was a you can watch the video or you can read it up it's a the link is in the description below so I definitely suggest go checking it out if you haven't seen it yet and um there's been a lot of interesting stuff that kind of came out of this interview and um I just wanted to kind of dissect it so I think the best way to kind of do this is chronologically so we're going to go straight into what you said at the beginning and it was kind of talking a bit about the trailers at the start and then got into the question about the lieutenants and then um, E Hayden was asked about um how we're going to meet the lieutenants how we're going to station them around the city and um, he says the first one we're going to meet is Vito Scaletta, who many of us will know from Mafia 2, and he was a ve very, very prominent character in the series. And Vito is working for the Italian mob when we meet him, and um, we do notice that while we're doing a bit of work for the Italian mob at the time, because we, what happens at the start of the game is that we're going to get told the story of how this Lincoln Clay is someone who's lost family, and he's always been looking for family. He went to the orphanage, and that was shut down. And we see him in the trailer stood at the end of, sat down at the end of the street. And then he goes to church and then he can't find any family there. He joins just kind of general gangs and can't find family there. Goes to Vietnam to fight in the army in the special forces and can't find family there. And then he finally finds this family in the black mob, which is where I predict is where the game is going to begin. And we play, say, a couple of missions for the black mob and it's all going well. Everything's going swimmingly. And then we do some work for the Italian mob. And then the Italian mob kind of schools over, screw Lincoln over, and then kills pretty much the black mob that we're working for. And that's when Lincoln gets this vengeance against the Italian mob, and that's why we're trying to take down, down the Italian mob in Mafia 3. So um, we notice that Vito Scaletta has a tension with the Italian mob boss, whose name is Salma Arcano. Uh, Arcano? I couldn't, I couldn't really understood what he said. I think it was Arcano that he said. And... Um, we notice there's a bit of tension between Vito and Salma, and then Vito decides to come to our side and fight against the mob. Later on, we meet the Irish mobster Burke, who was he's kind of been beaten around by the Italian mob. He's had his knees broken by them, fingers broken, really been had his territory almost gone completely, and he's been led to only holding a small part of the city because of how the Italian mob have kind of pushed him away. And um, so he's got some vengeance against the Italian mob and really wants to get back at them. So then he joins our cause. And then after that, we meet Cassandra, who is the Haitian woman gangster with the afro. And it very looks like if it's going to be Haitian gangsters, it's going to be inspired by the Zoe Pound gang in Miami in the early 70s, which is going to be interesting to see. And she also has got this griff against the Italian mob. So all four of us have got this united force against going against the Italian mob. And Hayden stressed the point that we are the leader of the of these, and these three, they, we've come to an agreement where these three are behind us and they're doing stuff for us, but they are definitely lieutenants and not the leader, which is great to see. So um, th he was then asked why did they keep Vito in the game and what what was the decision behind keeping him in the game, and um, he, I really liked Hayden's answer, and he says that he was a vital character to the Mafia series, and. To keep him demonstrates that this is one ma huge Mafia universe. It's not separate stories and separate areas. There is a tie-ins to the different games, which was what, something they wanted to do. And they also wanted to maintain this tradition of moving forward in time, as the first Mafia game was in the late 20s, then the 40s and 50s for Mafia 2, and now it's going to be in 1968. So that's why they obviously went to 1968. And obviously they wanted to have that time for Mafia 2, so the Mafia fans, like most of us watching this, watching this video right now, will have and then he added something that kind of got us all could get us all excited is that there's going to be other characters from mafia 2 that are going to be in the game as well he didn't confirm which ones and that there's going to be surprises from some surprises from mafia 2 in mafia 3 so is there a possibility that joe is still alive who knows i mean fuck knows i always think he's dead i've always thought he was dead i mean I i'm sure he's dead i'm so sure he's dead but, you know, if if he could be. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest, before Mafia 3 was announced, I was like 100% that Joe is dead. But after 
seen different people's reactions. I'm now around about 50-50. I don't have a fucking clue what's going on. Okay. He then went into the setting of the game. And one reason for 1968 was because they wanted it to be in the deep south of America in this real turbulent year. As this year, we've got the Vietnam War. We've got the Martin Luther King assassination, the Robert F. Kennedy assassination, the civil rights movement as well. And there's a lot going on in 1968, one of the major years in American history. And being the most corrupt city in America at the time, New Orleans, and everything that's going on with the civil rights movement, it's really the perfect city to have this game in. And I think it was probably too kind of good opportunity to refuse plus you've got this incredible soundtrack as well we've got the say the jazz of new orleans the swing music you've got the kinks Jimi hendrix rolling stones you've got some incredible music for us to enjoy while we're just driving around and i'm very happy the setting for me is the main reason to play the game even if you've got no interest in mafia no interest in really the genre the setting of 68 the music new orleans a city that's not been explored in a video game it's just going to be something that's going to be phenomenal and i'm so excited to be able to explore this city okay if um one of if any of you have been watching any of my previous videos you'd know that my main worry for the game was that it's going really open world and that the story could be a bit scattered so that kind of, kind of worry's kind of been shunned down in this interview is um he Hayden said that the game has got big narrative points, so that means that there's going to be major story points, so the same thing happens to everyone at these points, but there's going to be many different ways of getting there. Think of it as, well, let's say, different ways you can get to that place. You know, you do that same mission, that, like he described it as tent poles, you know? There's way you can go all the way around and go so do so many different things to get to this point where you have this story conclusion and then you can branch out again but come in at the same point. So we're going to have the same story points but there's going to be unique experiences to get into them areas. And um, we've heard before in, in the Gamescom reveal that we are going to be taking strongholds in the game and that we get unique rewards and strongholds are not going to be... I, I say that with quotation marks because he referenced them as strongholds but these places are going to be, you know, drug clubs, jazz clubs, you know... Maybe like the mob bosses' homes, bars. It's going to be them kind of things where it's going to be for the opposing mafia. So it's going to be the Italian mob or various mobs in the city where we can take them and deploy a lieutenant or deploy someone in our crew to kind of own that that area and possibly own the district and then do what they will there. They're going to be doing their own thing now when we deploy them and then give us unique rewards for putting a certain person there. The example that Hayden uses was giving one lieutenant. Uh, say a jazz club say you give veto at the jazz club and then that could give the reward of improving the muscle for your men so it's going to be improving the general success rate of deploying your for your forces to say your men that you that you've got to win in the fight but there's so many different things you can do you can do you know drugs so like you can make money for you and things like that there's so the, the possibilities are endless at the end of the day and um the idea of unique rewards for the different clubs and putting different lieutenants is going back to that idea that every story is unique, which is the motto at Hangar 13, which really they're, trying, they're aiming to get big time. And it's something that we I, I generally get the feel that we're going to be able to do. But then it's also got that good part as well. It's going to be maintaining that main story. As he said, it's got them tent poles that we all get to where we have this say so this story twist or this cutscene or whatever where something big happens, something major happens to the story. Which is, in my opinion, very, very exciting. Okay, next up in the interview, we get an insight into the development system that they've got at Hangar 13 for the kind of new gen, for the current gen consoles, for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the PC systems. As they said, they've, got, they've been using brand new technology and possibly a new engine. They've not confirmed what's been new, and they said that a lot of stuff's been upgraded from Mafia 2 to kind of be able to fit this new, these new systems. And um, the biggest things to me that I think have really improved by, by the looks of the trailer and the gameplay that we've seen is the lighting is very much, is I think, incredible. Especially the reflections of the water on the floor and the street lights. The lighting's incredible. And the pedestrians on the pavement as well as the density of them as Hayden Blackman touched upon this as he says the density of them on the path or in the parks they're very clustered and it's not like a normal say for example Grand Theft Auto 5 and the Xbox 360 when they're just walking up and down the street there's people talking to each other there's there's things going on which I really enjoy 
Okay, they, they next go on to driving and talk about the car being a weapon now in the Mafia game. And they talked about the move, the barrel roll move, where you shoot the car into the two cars and set an explosion while you jump out and ready to fight. But um, they said that the driving was based on the Hollywood blockbuster, Hollywood blockbuster driving, which is, you know, the kind of drifting cars. And the, it gives you that little bit of cinematic experience while you can see the kind of car drift around the cars, which looks really cool and is going to be fun to partake in. And it shows the mirror as well. If we get the top that shows the cutscene, so say like you've done an explosion on a car, you can see it in the windscreen in the mirror, it gets a bit bigger, so you can just quickly look up, see the cutscene, and then get on with driving without having to look behind and risk your life. But this sounds all well and good, but I hope they don't take it too far because you'll if it take, gets it to the point where every time you get in a car and there's gonna be explosions galore happening and we don't see the repercussions of this, it's gonna feel a bit cheap and a bit clumsy on the side of the story it, it's going to be fun you know in the times when you get a major car chase and an explosion happens that you've caused and you can see it in the windscreen but at the same time i just hope you know it's, it's not the story that too much of a good thing gets sour and i hope that doesn't happen when it comes to the driving it's it, if it goes on too many times it's just going to be get repetitive and a bit ridiculous at the end of the day but you know it's definitely good if they have it in small doses Okay, we get little bits of information when it talks about the the city, as they said that they using their own version of New Orleans. I'm looking forward to see what the name of it's going to be, by the way. As, you know, they did with Empire Bay, as that was really based off New York. But they said that what, they've used creative license in putting tunnels below the city, so you can enter by boat. This sounds like a possible mission to me. Maybe we're bringing in drugs or something into the city, and we're deploying them around, or... We're meeting people under, I don't know what it's going to be, but it definitely sounds like a setting for a mission in these tunnels. They also said that there's going to be different people, different NPCs in the game that gravitate towards different types of weapons. So, Vito will gravitate to different types of weapons than the Irish gangster Birkwood, because they come from different backgrounds and use different things in the past. And then you get people like Lincoln Clay, who who is the main protagonist, who will be able to use the majority of weapons because he was in the special forces and is going to be really tied to really all types and he's going to be using different ones than the people who kind of grow up on the streets which i found interesting and and i like the fact the idea that different mobs are going to be using different weapons so maybe when we see italian mobs they're going to be using tommy guns but when we see the irish mob they'll be using pistols and knives and things like that that'll be interesting to see um there's going to be collectibles in the game as well, which is go- which is exciting because you know I, I know a lot of people went around collecting the Playboy ma- magazines for in Mafia Two and the wanted posters, so that's going to be interesting to try and get. And um, Hayden Blackman said that they're going to be working on cinematics for the story next, and more things in expanding the world in Mafia Three over these next couple of months. So the game definitely sounds like it's taken a lot of shape because cinematics is something that is normally done towards the end of development. So that's, this sounds like it's pretty close to being done. Plus with the game coming out next year, they said it's going to be a 2016 release. Probably going to be a kind of fall of 2016, a kind of Christmas time, November release day. That's not normally what happens with these games. I'd be surprised if it's earlier than that. But we'll see. We'll have to wait for more information to come out. And um, overall, I thought this was a really, really solid interview. I um, really enjoyed listening to it. I really enjoyed hearing... Hayden Blackman speak as um if many of you have seen my um Hangar thirteen video that I put on about a week ago where I said that this is a completely new development team under two K check and Hayden Blackman is a person who's done a lot of work on Star Wars games and really that's kind of all he's been all he's done in his career Star Wars games. So I was kind of a bit pessimistic if he was able to do it, but after hearing him talk in these interviews and in a couple of interviews over Gamescom I really feel like he's very passionate about the Mafia franchise, as I noticed there was a multiple times in this interview where he was try- he was so excited to talk about the game that he was talking really fast at points and trying to get a lot out in a short period of time. And he generally seems excited by the game and excited by the fan base. And he said he was very humbled by the good reception that the game has got, the game trailer has got. And overall, I'm I'm really excited to see what him and Hangar 13 can do for the game. I've got full faith behind them now and... I don't really have any worries after seeing what I've seen at Gamescom. I'm very excited that they've got, you know, the balls, I'd say, to be able to carry 
such an important time, which I'm going to be talking about in another video. And I'm just really excited to play the game. And I'm really excited what the turn that they've taken for Mafia 2. So, make sure you leave your comments below of what you've generally thought about this interview. Are you happy about the kind of being narrative points in the story? Are you happy about the meeting Vito early in the game? You know, that's a big thing that, I that this kind of came from this interview. It sounds like we're going to meet Vito within the first couple of hours of the game. And is that exciting for you? Are you excited to meet Vito that early? Or would you like him to come later on in the game? Or and what, Also, what do you think about driving? Everything that's kind of been touched upon in this video, the new tech, the setting. Are you, are you all excited about that? Leave your comments below of what you think about it. I really want to hear what everyone's got to say. I'm really interested in seeing people's opinions on this. And also, follow me on Twitter as well, at C, where I tweet out my Mafia News updates. And check out that interview below. It's in the description below. Also, make sure you subscribe for more. I've got a lot of videos coming on. I'm going to do a video on my views on the driving on Mafia 3. And um, my views on everything that happened at Gamescom. And really what I'm generally thinking about the game at this stage and I'm looking forward to kind of making them videos also check out my gameplay analysis video I did a analysis of the gameplay sl slots that was released at Gamescom and it's I, th I think it's, 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 it's an okay it's a good video I think I think probably the best video I've done so far and make sure you check that out and um, also subscribe to John Fellow de Gorans goodbye <laughs>